Let's face it, charity is a coat some of us wear twice a year, as George Michael sang in one of his hits, Praying for Time. There are many ways to give back to your community, such as volunteering at a local shelter, donating to a food bank, or simply checking in on a neighbor who may be struggling. And in our local communities, we see the Muslims, Hindus, and various church organizations involved in charitable work without prejudice. For many of us who were once part of the Jehovah's Witness community, we know the extent of the organization's involvement in charitable activities. Do they engage in benevolent work, or is their focus primarily on other priorities? To understand the Jehovah's Witness perspective, let's start with their official stance on charity work. According to the Watchtower Society, their primary mission is to spread their beliefs and provide spiritual guidance. Charitable efforts are often framed as secondary to their main objective. But is this reflected in their actions? Let's dig deeper. But were these gifts that they were taking just a matter of charity, giving out freely to others? Well, let's look again in the Scriptures, this time to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verses 13 through 15. And this gives us a, a reason, we could say, for the policy or the viewpoint that the governing body has with regard to helping others. So 2 Corinthians 8, 13 through 15. For I do not want to make it easy for others, but difficult for you but that by means of an equalizing, your surplus at the present time might offset their need, so that their surplus might also offset the, your deficiency, that there may be an equalizing. Just as it is written, the person with much did not have too much, and the person with little did not have too little. What's the principle here? The principle is that even though these contributions were begin, being given to poor brothers and sisters, everyone had to do something. It wasn't just a charity where you gave money to the poor, but rather there was an expectation that each person, whether they were poor or they had more, uh, would do something towards the situation. And that's exactly the view the governing body takes today. Uh, yes, Bibles and Bible literature are uh, provided free of charge without cost to our brothers in all parts of the earth. And the brothers then donate according to their means. Kingdom halls are being built uh, in many countries that can't afford to build kingdom halls. And yet again, the governing body allows the opportunity for the brothers in those countries to also donate toward the construction of kingdom halls. Why? Uh, Chris and them would probably say, well, these are poor people, let's just make it a charity. But you see, Jesus didn't stop the widow from putting the two coins in, did he? He didn't say, look, hold on, you need that, you're poor, uh, let the rich people put money in. Now, Jesus allowed her to make that donation. Why? Because that was her gift to Jehovah, and Jehovah would bless her for doing that. So when we think about what's happening with regard to our organization, not only there's printing of Bibles, literature, building of kingdom halls, and also this huge disaster relief that continues on. What can we be happy with? We can be happy with the viewpoint of the governing body, and we can be very happy that the publishing committee of the governing body does look after our limited means. Yes, they care for the money so that when the governing body makes decisions about what needs to be done, they don't say there's no money for it. No, they make sure that our limited funds are available for the important work to spiritually feed people, but also help them in a physical sense too. While there are reports of individual witnesses engaging in acts of kindness, the organized charitable initiatives appear to be limited. In fact, during my time as a Jehovah's Witness, I have never encountered any formal organized charitable event by the local congregation or the organization at large. The organization's focus is on preaching, literature distribution, and attending meetings. 
A key point of discussion revolves around the notion that Jehovah's Witnesses view evangelism as the ultimate form of charity. By spreading their beliefs, they believe they are offering the greatest gift, the opportunity for ever, everlasting life. This perspective often leads to a prioritization of preaching over traditional charity uh, work. The organization provides limited assistance in times of crisis. However, these cases seem to be the exception rather than the rule. The lack of a robust and transparent charitable structure raises questions about the organization's priorities. To better understand the financial aspects, we need to examine the Watchtower's level of transparency. The organization is known for its discreet financial practices. Limited public discourse makes it challenging to assess the allocation of funds and resources toward charitable uh, endeavors. How much of the donations go towards direct aid and community support? Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide are often left to fend for themselves during times of need. Even poor members are encouraged to donate to the organization while receiving no assistance in return. The general, the general consensus is that the public perceives Jehovah's Witnesses as less involved in traditional charity work compared to other religious organizations. The focus on evangelism seems to contribute to this perception. While it's essential to respect the diversity of religious practices, the Jehovah's Witness emphasis on evangelism shows limited involvement in traditional charitable activities. Many other religious organizations successfully balance spreading their beliefs with active community engagement and charitable work. The following are quotes from articles on their own website and publications. Our activities. Jehovah's Witnesses are known for their strong sense of community and their efforts to help one another. In times of disaster or personal hardship, the Witnesses in affected area quickly organize to provide practical assistance and comfort to their fellow members. How we help others. Jehovah's Witnesses also show love by helping fellow worshippers in times of need. For example, after a natural disaster, it is not unusual for witnesses in unaffected areas to travel to the affected area to help repair and rebuild damaged homes. How do Jehovah's Witnesses help in times of disaster? In addition to receiving material assistance, victims often receive emotional and spiritual comfort from their fellow witnesses. Aid after disasters, how Jehovah's Witnesses help, the support and assistance that victims receive often goes beyond material aid. It includes emotional and spiritual comfort from their fellow worshippers. Aid to our brothers worldwide. Jehovah's Witnesses around the world have a long history of coming to the aid of their fellow believers when disaster strikes. Whether the need is great or small, help is rendered quickly, efficiently and lovingly. These quotes emphasize the organization's commitment to providing assistance and comfort to their own members, particularly in times of disaster or personal hardship. It is evident that the organization's primary focus is on spreading their beliefs. While individual witnesses may engage in acts of kindness, the lack of transparent organized charitable efforts is non-existent. Thank you for joining me in this exploration. If you have experiences or insights to share about this, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe and share it with others who might find it interesting.